a bully when you really think about it if you're like scrawny little darren carter in fourth grade yeah, right yeah and some big tough bully comes along and beats you up hmm. that's what everyone expected to happen you know so nobody really cares they're like great you beat that kid up yay good for you <laughs> you know yeah. nobody cares however if you even so much as draw blood if you fought back and punched him in the nose and and he bled suddenly he's not the toughest guy in the world anymore. you know yeah now all the other kids are like oh he can get hurt too if he tries to bully me i'm gonna beat the crap out of him you know <laughs> And so he's the only one who really has anything to lose in the situation. <laughs> but a lot of people don't know that, you know. I saw that recently happen on a, a, an episode of Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> they were like, they were, there was the, the, the bully. Every comes, time I yep. try and make you seem cooler. <laughs> exactly. But it was a re You bring it back to Little House on the Prairie. I'll make it I all just gave you this great story where you beat up a bully. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. on Little House, they did. Oh, God yeah. damn it. it was a remix. So Jay-Z produced this episode. No, I'm just kidding. Now is it cool? <laughs> yeah. the, uh, I would love to to see Jay-Z's little house on the prairie. Pocket party. You want to show your support every little bit helps and I really mean that. Uh PayPal go to darrencarter.com. There's a support the show button at darrencarter.com support the show using PayPal. If you're more of a Venmo person, you like doing Venmo, it's very easy at Darren Carter Comic. At Darren Carter Comic on Venmo. PayPal go to darrencarter.com. Support the show. Every little bit counts. I'm telling you, it means a lot. It means the world. And it keeps this show going. It keeps me motivated. And it buys new equipment. And it just helps. So thank you so much. And we're back heading into March. March 2022. That's right. Darren Carter, the party starter. Thanks again for joining us on the Pocket Party Podcast. Can you believe it's been 212 episodes? What? <laughs> Hello, we are live. <laughs> we are. Ah. <laughs> it's a Hello, everyone. If you're, if it's a first time listener, there's this guy that I torture. He's a hilarious comedian. He's got talent, and I call him on Mon I, Mondays and Tuesday mornings every now and then, and we do a podcast. <laughs> and I hate it. He hates it. <laughs> I just hate it. I hate. He goes, I'm gonna. Bust your balls at 11 a.m. tomorrow. <laughs> I know. Even though I know you're a nighttime person. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like an idiot, I go, okay. Yeah. Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? I know. It's funny because what, what's a natural, like if, if you had, let's say, no no auditions, no appointments, no podcasts. No, <laughs> nothing going on in my life. Uh, 5 p.m. Really? You, no, you would, you would, you would, you think you might actually wake up at five p.m. I, I believe there, there might be vampire in my bloodline somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> like I know my mom flat out told me that uh, we're part gypsy, mm. and I don't. Who knows how true any of that is? <laughs> right. But like, I think that might have just been like they might claim that for tax reasons or something <laughs> a long time ago. Who knows? You know, but uh, yeah, and there was a, evidently a family curse. Oh boy! Where, oh boy! Because on her side of the family, it's like mostly Mexican, but there was, I guess, some Greek gypsy that fell in love with my Mexican great 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 grandfather, and it was forbidden. For some oh. reason, like they weren't, it was a Romeo and Juliet type thing. They weren't supposed to get together. And the gypsies were like, don't get together or we'll have to curse everybody, you know, and <laughs> we don't want to do that. Yeah. And, and the couple was like, F that noise, we're getting married. And so they got married. And my great, great, great grandmother, uh, who was the gypsy girl, gave birth to my great great grandmother 
I think that's right. And then promptly died. Oh. So they were like, and the gypsies were like, okay, well, you had it coming. We're leaving town. Bye. <laughs> and we never yeah. heard from them again. And <laughs> it was like, I can't imagine if if we had like a full family reunion, how awkward that would be. <laughs> but you, you told, we told you that's I'm, what we do. I'm picturing like a cartoonish, like, you know, sitcom television family reunion, like, Half the family's right. dressed with like scarves and trinkets and like, <laughs> yeah, and it's like traditional like uh, stereotypical Taco Bell Mexicans yeah. and just them and fortune tellers and no like <laughs> exactly. no actual real people yeah. of, of either group. I you know. know, just the saddest most stereotypical <laughs> white bread version of the story. I know. I, I, there's I, a werewolf. Uh, exactly season, you know <laughs> Pancho Villa is there even though we're not related you know <laughs> right I know that's one that is a pretty cool look though with like the, the like how when you see like the mariachis with the giant sombrero I guess it might be called and then the the pants yeah. that go down like the the bullets that go across like an X across the chest the bullets over, like over the poncho, where it's like one on each side, and it makes an X. Yeah, and and then what I love about that is the Clint Eastwood films kind of covered this. You can be hiding anything under that poncho. You can have a whole arsenal of weapons. Oh you yeah, know? like the bullets could just be a distraction. You know, it's like oh, he's he's got a bunch of shotgun shells. He must have a shotgun under there. Or maybe I have Chinese stars, and they were just to distract you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? Maybe I have a baby. Nobody wants to hurt a baby, you know. Or, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? That's a weird strategy, but yeah, yeah. You, you can have a baby. I've seen and, some, uh, yeah. In the Clint Eastwood movie, remember he he like invented bulletproof vests that way. Oh, he, that's cool. I didn't know uh, that. He, oh, oh, this may be a spoiler. I won't tell you anymore. How about that? Watch uh, <laughs> a certain Western, I would assume. <laughs> yeah. Watch the spaghetti Westerns, like the good, the bad, and the ugly trilogy. Yeah. If you have, have you seen those? Um, I don't think a I have. Full of dollars, I, 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 a few yeah, dollars more. Yeah, that's the ones I gotta watch. I gotta watch those really good. You know, I know the music, like. Oh yeah. The, uh, I can't think of his name right now. The, oh, uh, Inio Morricone. Uh, who wrote all the music for that? And uh, that that guy was amazing. He, I I think he only just recently passed, but his music it, it's gone all the way all the way to like Kill Bill. He wrote stuff for that, and like uh, it it's amazing. But yeah, see those movies uh, as soon as you can. But, I, I, you know, you. Uh, I asked you a couple of weeks ago. I was like, "Hey, what should I watch? I want to." You know, I was on the road, and the the club owner was like, "Hey, come on over. We'll watch movies." And he's like, "What do you watch? What genre? I have it all." Because he had like, you know, every pay service you could think of. And I'm like, "Damn, this is kind of cool." Like, not you know, yeah. like sometimes you're like, "Ooh, is it on Netflix?" Ah, oh, dang! But this guy had it all. And he's like, "What do you want?" And if we don't have it, I'll buy it. And I was like, "Okay, this is <laughs> this is the time." Okay. So then, uh, you, you one of the choices I think that you had suggested was the Magnificent Seven, and I was like, okay, that's something I've heard of. I know it's got to be good. It's been around this many decades. So yeah, yeah we watched it. And, yeah, it was Queen. it was great. It was it was uh, it was it was um, you know it was everything I expected to be and more. Like I and, and I think the I love when that happens when a movie actually lives up to the hype. Yes, so especially like a classic movie because you're like. Uh, it's from a different time. I don't know if it's going to matter to me at all. Right. But, I, you know, when it's good like that, that movie is good. And I think yeah. what's what's great about that movie is I'm, I've been watching clips of it again because the first time you're just taking it all in, you don't know. I didn't know who was who. And then it's great nowadays. And you can watch a great piece of art and then go back and be like, who is that actor? Who is that actress? What do they go on to do? Oh, that, oh you learn a little behind the scenes tales and now i want to watch it again and be like that's okay like yule brenner i mostly knew him from that photo the king and i the, you know he's the bald guy and uh but to see him in this movie he looked really like this cool like he was bald but he had like, this cool like look to him and he was just the main badass that was assembling these 
you know, the Magnificent yeah. Seven to protect this little town in Mexico. Yeah, and you got the feeling you didn't really know where he was from or what his backstory was. Like, they, they kept it all kind of mysterious, you know? And uh, and I love that Steve McQueen, it was kind of like that uh, game-recognized game sort of thing where they both just instantly got along because they knew they were both right. badasses. Yeah, yeah. You know? And, uh, and Steve McQueen, I think that was my first real exposure to him i'd heard like i used to be a big dave letterman fan uh you see i still am but like he uh he would talk about steve mcqueen all the time Mm. and about how great he was and i was like in in all the like stuff that i'd seen i was like he just seems like a guy he doesn't seem like anything all that special he just seems like a dude but when i saw that movie i was like oh i get why he thinks this guy is cool this guy's really right, fucking right. cool you know and uh i guess he uh yule brenner <laughs> pissed him off because uh you know they're on set and they're all in cowboy gear yep. and stuff and back then you would have to think every actor who was on that set grew up playing cowboy oh yeah you know and so they all fancy themselves like the best cowboy right Oh, yeah, especially if that you're well, right. Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah, you know, and, like, they would have drawing contests. And I guess Yul Brynner just outdrew everyone. Oh, oh for people that are listening, it's not, not like with the pen and paper drawing, like with your gun. Like with, <laughs> right, like yeah, gunslinger yeah. drawing. Yeah, like, like put your hands by a, your side, and how fast can you whip out your gun and do your pistol? Yeah. And I'm sorry, and, who, and who was like, the fastest one you said on that? Uh, Yul Brenner, without question. Like, everyone was like, he's just far faster than everybody. And mm. Steve McQueen, though, he was just, like, a little bit slower mm. <laughs> than, yeah. than Yul Brenner. And it really pissed him off. And so, even though on, on screen they've got this great chemistry, off screen he was kind of pissed at him. You know? Yeah. So, so, so I had... Uh, I, someone told me the guy that I was watching the movie with. He said that he saw, and it might be in the DVD extras or somewhere in the interview. But I guess uh, Yul Brenner wanted to appear taller in the scenes with Steve McQueen. So, uh-huh. he, so when there were, he would make sure there was a pound, like a like a mound of dirt he would stand on. Yeah. And, uh, and they said that every time uh, when he wasn't looking, Steve McQueen would kind of walk by and kind of kick it, kind of you know take some of the sand and dirt away. <laughs> to kind of make him yeah. a little shorter, and and then there's a you could look up stuff online where um, Steve McQueen would steal scenes a little bit, like as Yul Brenner was talking, they would he would touch his cowboy hat. He was kind of he'd be in the background. Steve McQueen would be not talking in the scene, but like tapping. Yeah, his he hat would do something to pull focus. Or, yeah, yeah, and they yeah. Said, so there was yeah. that rivalry going on between them, but I think it added to the movie. Actually, I think so too. You know, it made it uh, better that they were a bit. Uh, combative with each other, you know, and uh, like God, the, who else is in there? There, were, there was that drawing scene too, you know, where they do the quick draw. I remember the, I remember, I forget the guy's name, but he he might have been the seventh or the eighth of the Magnificent Seven. I don't know if he made the team or not. I think he did, but he was the guy. He came in like he was a badass, and he's like, okay, clap. Remember the clapping scene? Mm-hmm. Like, clap, and then. Yul Brenner would put his hands in between the clap and he could now do it faster. Now do it as fast as you can. And before he could do it, whoosh, his hand was already on his chest. Like, dude, you're, I got you. Yeah. You know, and the guy didn't know how to respond. And he just was like, Ugh, and he leaves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. That, uh, yeah. Charles Bronson was in it before he was a really big name, you know, uh, a lot of like really really good character actors from that time one of them was a it might have been steve mcqueen one of them was supposed to be like a no no it was uh the guy that was like a really fast knife thrower he could throw the knife super fast Sing. oh yeah was that warren oates that's been a while since i've seen it um uh, you'd know the guy he's like a famous he's a famous actor i uh, know uh, george coburn yep that's who it was yep yeah it's funny because at, uh, at that time, even growing up, like uh, you know, I grew up in the seventies and eighties. But you know, we were those, those kind of movies were always on, and you know, Bonanza, Gunsmoke, The Big Valley, <laughs> you know, like all, all that kind of right. all that kind of stuff. So of course, like you know, when you had, you know, 
uh, I almost said free time, but it seemed like we had a lot of free time back then. But um, I remember I'd be in the backyard, you know, pretending to be a cowboy and running around the trees and pretending to do these little fun shootouts and the whole thing. Like that was a, a big yeah, thing. Oh, like it's you, James Coburn. James and, Coburn. Uh, and Robert Vaughn. Yep, he was yep. To, and, uh, yeah, just a really, really good cast. That was but part, yeah, you were, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like that was part of growing up, at least for my generation. Like you'd get like the the little toy gun and the holster and did you did you have all that stuff too oh yeah the cap guns the uh i i was lucky i was kind of a 80s kid and at that time there were a lot of options there was like the old western cap guns and stuff like that yeah there were also like star wars guns that that were like identical to the ones in the movie um and then for a brief period it was really great there were these guns i forget the the brand name but they looked like actual current day weapons wow <laughs> and they were water guns that were automatic they were oh. like fire like the machine gun like they this... had a Uzi. oh wow but it would fire like in spurts but it would be like were they like super soakers? So, yeah, they were like pre super soaker, uh, like the thing that would evolve into those eventually. The oh, problem was, uh, I remember the commercial even said it was like the look, the feel, the style, so real. <laughs> and these guns were all painted to look like actual guns. Oh, they didn't have that orange thing at the uh, tip they of it. Had, nothing like that they just looked like guns and you know that story in die hard where uh the guy from uh family matters oh yeah the, the cop he, he goes i shot a kid he was like he oh, had yeah. a toy ray gun and it looked real enough that's based on a real thing that happened where some kid had one of these and it looked like he was pulling out a 45 to shoot at a cop and he got killed and so ever since then guns have been uh, orange tipped or for a while they were all wow. neon you know like neon green and neon oh yeah and stuff like that and that's why that happened i i found it it's called the intertech water gun yes and it says, they were amazing oh yeah it says it was motorized they had a whole arsenal they had a rocket launcher they had uh an AK-47. Oh wow! Uh, the the Soviet troops' choice. Uh, they had the, <laughs> it says, the Uzi nine millimeter, which uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger made famous in the Terminator. Uh, they had a forty-five caliber handgun. Uh, I believe they had like a thirty-eight special. I may be wrong about that, but they even had uh, water balloon grenades. Oh my God! That sounds fun. That looked like like when they were full, they looked like real grenades. You know, <laughs> yeah, I know. It's <laughs> so it, like kids were just roving around the neighborhood, yeah, dressed like yeah. Rambo, <laughs> and just blowing each other away. And I'm sure if a cop like came on that in yeah. the park, they'd be like, "What the hell?" I, I had a fake BB gun. It wasn't even a real BB gun; it was fake. And I remember like being out in the front yard in the summer and there's you know everyone's at work or just and i was the only one out there and i had this gun and i was pointing it up at birds and playing around and i remember this cop came over and was like hey uh what is that what you doing and I, and uh, and i said oh it's just a toy and then he's like okay and i you know he was like uh just really try not to point it at houses and stuff and uh carry on yeah <laughs> you know like but yeah that must have been a nightmare for for everybody back then with these realistic you know well and bb guns were dangerous and slingshots and stuff like that we had those oh yeah i had those too and my brother my older brother he's he's this i have two brothers but my middle brother is was like the sweetest guy in the world but we were outside and uh he had a bb gun and a little bird flew overhead and he was like i'm gonna see if i can scare that bird <laughs> well you can guess what happened he was a good he, shot. He, he accidentally a great shot, and mm. like it was a one in a million shot, and we heard this little, eh. oh, <laughs> like, dang. and it and it fell in into our neighbor's yard, 
stone dead. Wow. Just- and I was like, you killed it. And my brother immediately started crying. He was like, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was so sad. And, and I, he didn't really play with the BB gun after that. Yeah. yeah. Like, He's like, no, this is fine. I know. I remember I, we used to take a... Uh, the tops of you know like tin cans like or you know uh, not tin cans but you know when you have the can opener and you'd open up the can of beans or you know uh, maybe some yeah. <laughs> a previous episode a delicious can of tamales <laughs> sure yeah but we I remember nice taking the can of tamales <laughs> exactly or spaghettios or whatever and so I would I would take I would nail those to the fence and try to hit that little ding 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 trying to make that noise that ding or just shoot it like the cans or the bottles in the backyard that was pretty fun you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, by the way, you're right about that. You got a great memory uh, it, for that that water gun you were telling me about. It says the slogan was "The look, the feel, the sound, so real." Enter the sound. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, because they had the, the. I think it played like audio clips that sounded like machine gun fire and stuff wow. like that. <laughs> so they were great, but also horrifically dangerous. You know. Yeah. That was, uh, but that was like the Reagan era. That was like GI Joe and all that sort of stuff. Like you said, the, Rambo, the Cold and, War, and you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Everything was either telling us about like how we should, right now, we should enlist and kill communists, or that there was eventually going to be a nuclear war, and you better get a leather suit and a Trans Am <laughs> and a shotgun I to know. live. <laughs> Let me and, ask, and it was yeah. always like you're gonna survive it there's there'll be a nuclear war but you're yeah. gonna survive it and it's gonna be awful <laughs> yeah but you better get ready <laughs> you know right let, let me ask you about other uh 80s uh memories did you ever get into did you ever have a mullet no i had a friend <laughs> i had a couple of friends that got real in the mullet yeah i guess i may have kind of had one like I let my hair grow long in the back, but I didn't shave it on the sides. Right, to right. Me, to me, that's what makes it a mullet, you know. Yeah. But I had a friend, uh, Ron, who had the only thing, like if you were to power rank mullets, <laughs> I think this would outrank a mullet. <laughs> he had what was called a rat tail. Oh gosh! Oh where no! It, it was he had a buzz cut like army military buzz cut yeah. except on the back like at the base of the skull he grew out a really long tail of hair <laughs> and he was really proud of it and, yeah and he was kind of like why aren't y'all uh growing out rat tails like me he also made his own crossbow out of wood one, <laughs> one time yeah and uh he wore a uh Escape from New York t-shirt like it was a uniform like <laughs> every day and none of us had seen that movie or had a frame of reference on it right. his, his dad didn't care he let him rent like whatever he wanted you know <laughs> and uh, he saw Robocop way before any of the rest of us did and uh, he, yeah it's funny about that rat tail because my cousin Jacob had a rat tail for years. Like I was just in it, and I remember people would be like, "I just want to cut it off. They just want to take a little scissor and take that, you know, because it'd yeah. be about what two or three inches wide, a bit long, and it because you know from the front you're like, oh, you got like a like a flat top, or you look like Elvis from the front, but in the back it was like, damn, sure. dude, like that's. I never had like the full on mullet, you know, like you see, like you said, with the shaved on the side, but I did. There was something cool about like letting the back grow. You're like, oh wow, this is kind of cool. I got like back, you know, I can let it grow. And yeah, the way that it got, I got rid of it is uh, I got a job at Great America. And, uh, <laughs> it was a theme park, and they were like, you have to, your hair cannot go below your collar. And I, so I would try to like stretch my neck out. So I'm like, no, it doesn't go there. And then eventually they were like, listen, uh, you got to go get a haircut and wardrobe or we just, and, or you got to, you got to go home. And I'm like, all right. So, so that's, I went to war- makeup and hair or whatever. And they, they just snipped it off. And that they was should the have end. done it in like the public square. <laughs> I know exactly. <laughs> One of our employees has failed us. And yeah. They, he will be punished in public here we, in Great America. We shall snip that red head locks of mullet. Yeah. 
<laughs> I mean, that kind of goes hand in hand, mullets and red hair. I mean, you got to kind of let one of the kids do it <laughs> that's visiting. You know. yeah, exactly. That's a f- that was a tough job, man. Marriott's Great America. Well, then I think they changed it to Six Flags, but it was it was really cool. They came. Yeah. To, the way I got the job is they came to my hometown Fresno, and they they, they were there was the big auditions at Fresno City College Auditorium, and I went to the audition, <laughs> and uh, you know you're seeing all these various bad acts or whatever like there was a lady up there singing <laughs> she was singing a cappella. like i'd never seen like auditions before so it was hilarious to me she was, she was pretending to be almost doing like those rock rocket like kicks and she was singing horribly uh papa don't preach i'm keeping my baby <laughs> so she's like, papa doing don't. a rocket number to papa don't preach <laughs> i'm keeping hilarious. my baby papa don't preach and it was just like oh my god you know and then yeah, you don't really think of a, a song about a teen pregnancy, someone doing a bunch of high kicks. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, it, and you know, uh, yeah, it just it looked hilarious because she did not look like, she looked like she, yeah, she. I won't go there, but yeah, she definitely was yeah. not someone that would probably be pregnant for a while. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. You know, like, she, was, she was okay in that department. <laughs> she was but, not your first choice to exactly. replicate with. Yeah, to procreate, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It was like, but anyways, there was a lot of that. And then, you know, when I went up and did my uh, my Scooby-Doo impressions and the beatboxing and the Kermit the Frog and all that stuff. And the, <laughs> I did Pee Wee Herman and uh, Popeye and Boo Wee Goo. And they were like, perfect. This kid's like, I think I was 20, I was 20 years old. And they, they had this pilot program where they were like, so, some kid at the audition took some bad acid or something. Exactly. He's doing all these cartoon voices. Yeah. I was just Papa don't preach. I'm keeping my <laughs> yeah. baby. So then, so they were like, yeah, we're going to have fire breathers, stilt walkers, jugglers. We're going to have roam, roaming entertainers. And, and you'll be a stand-up comic. And there was only five of us. And uh, our job was to get, you know, to entertain people in line for roller coasters and, you know, before the you know, like the puppet shows or before people come out and they're, you know, at the old saloon and, you know, the, the, the band would play. So we, I do these little 15 minute shows, but. So you were basically there to distract them from the fact that there were only two roller coasters. <laughs> exactly. Like the speed, I think the <laughs> demon was one of them. And yeah, exactly. It was a and, and, and good point. And there was a, uh, you know, and, and for some of those things, there was no microphone or speakers or amplification. And I didn't even have a costume like the first two or three weeks. So. Wow, you know, I'm just walking around like, and they're like, "What do I do?" And they go, "Do you guys like?" He goes, "Just do your act," or, you know, if people go, "Which way is the demon roller coaster?" Like, point in both directions and be like, "It's that way." And it was, uh, <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, you know, and, and also <clears throat> it was really pretty tough because, like I said, I was tw- I had just turned 21. Excuse me, <clears throat> I just turned 21, and uh, you know, a lot of the, you know, you're. The girls were like my age, or maybe even a little older, and and so it's kind of like you're, it's embarrassing a little bit just to walk up. And- did, now, did you have when? Because I had this happen. Did they eventually saddle you with an embarrassing uniform? They did. It was blue polyester pants, and I remember it was like this checkered shirt and a vest and a bow tie that would light up. Bing, 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 bing. So you look so goofy. You look like a like you're you look- already you yeah. already have red hair that's bordering on a mullet exactly you know you're just like and they throw you in that outfit you know it was a new town i didn't know anybody you're out there it's like it's embarrassing you know and then when i would do the shows like in the saloon that was the best one because you actually had a microphone and and i'm like oh it's like i'm a comedian again you know because at that point i I had think i had done comedy for like at least a year maybe a year and a half so i kind of was familiar with how to entertain and you know all that but it was when you're just walking around and people are like standing in line and that was pre cell phone, so they were just they were like, Let's entertain people and you know, now you couldn't even do that job, I don't think, unless you're really good. Like it's the cast of Rent or the cast of Stomp or something like that where you know Yeah. Where they're banging the drum and people are like dancing and stuff, but just to do ro- like <coughs> roaming around as a comic, it was really weird. <laughs> well, you know, uh it's kind of similar to what Steve Martin did at Disneyland. He worked in the magic shop. Uh, yeah, on Main Street there. Yeah, and uh, but before that, he had worked at uh, oh, what's the jam that has a theme? Knott's Berry Farm. 
Knott's Berry Farm. Yeah. And they had like a little theater troupe there. And uh, me personally, I worked at, um, oh, Dave and Buster's, which is a, not quite the same thing. Oh, cool. But it's it's like a arcade for adults sort of deal. And uh, it was okay, but I worked at the like the prize cage where people would win a bunch of tickets. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then they would bring them to you, you know. And it was all done on a scale. They weighed the tickets because they, you know, paper weighs a certain amount. And they just figured out what it was. And it would tell you how many tickets someone had. And then you would take the tickets and throw them into a paper shredder and print out a voucher for the person. And then they could, you know, buy, you know, a big Bugs Bunny or whatever, you know, or, yeah. you know, a pencil sharpener or whatever they could have get, you know. Well, I didn't explain it to this really old man one day. And he had brought like a thousand tickets, mm. like just this massive amount of tickets. Yeah. And, uh, so I throw them into the bin to weigh them and I'm printing out the voucher and I'm just kind of, you know, when you're in the zone, you're just kind of doing your yeah. thing. Yeah. I take all those tickets and throw them in the paper shredder. And he goes, what the hell kind of operation are you running here? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh no, I'm, I'm printing them up, sir. You've got this way. He goes, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, like, like there's a family heirloom like, like he worked yeah. all day to get those tickets yeah. and then i'm like great i'm gonna throw these in a shredder <laughs> that's awesome well, do you remember any of the really cool prizes where you're like man that's something i'd like to Ooh, can i just buy that there were that was to me that was the thing was a lot of these were things you could just go buy very easily like a remote control truck or like a stereo that was back when stereos were a thing, and, yeah. you know, um, the, the big, big prize was like a big TV mm. and it was like before flat screen. So it was like within two years, it was outdated, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, yeah. but, uh, one of the best things for me, I thought that you could get was just more like power cards and stuff. Oh yeah. Uh, and then you just could play video games just play more games for free if you want a bunch you know that's cool I but oh. uh i got like employee of the month one <laughs> one time and did you I did, want... you, did you shred it <laughs> <laughs> i should have that i don't need hilarious. your bullshit <laughs> but no they were really they were actually really encouraging because i told them i was like i'm just getting this job to save up to move to la and they were like oh okay and they were like you know, we have a murder mystery dinner theater here. Uh, you should talk to the owner of it. And uh, I did. And it turned out we knew each other from like regional theater. And he was like, oh, you want to be in it? And I was like, yeah, that'd be great. And so he gave me a part in the show. And so every Friday, they would let me clock out early and go be in a murder mystery. Wow on the premises and i got paid 75 bucks for that dude that's a lot plus uh, uh we got to eat because it was a murder mystery dinner theater so we got like some of the best food at the place for free how does that so, work in mur the murder this is a really cool gig you know are you guys on stage are you in the restaurant and then you, you just project your voice that kind of thing yeah you're in the restaurant and you just project your voice and then you kind of say why they should think your character is the murderer but mm. by way of saying oh i'm definitely not the murderer <laughs> you oh, know yeah. like yeah you know and uh my character people voted for a lot because he was the chef and the the murdered person was always poisoned and so <laughs> of course <laughs> a yeah. lot of times you know and but they let you improv once you got caught like you could just make up what ah the reason i killed him was this or that and it was, so that was always a lot of fun oh, do you think was that like a trend or is that still happening the murder mysteries i feel like i used to hear that about that a lot i feel like it's been it still happens but it's kind of for the most part been replaced by things like escape rooms oh you're right that's what it is you, 
you know, like that's the new version of that. You hey, know, let's, let's do something that's not karaoke. Let's do something that's not comedy. Let's do something that's not watching a band. We'll go to an escape room or right, or they'll have <clears throat> they'll have them come to your place or like su- surprise someone by like they made a movie about it recently uh, where uh, this guy stages a fake murder in his place and all the couples there have to like solve it but it turns out it's real you know yeah uh the jason bateman movie Mm. game night i think is the one yeah it does so sound that, familiar. Yeah, that sounds familiar. That's uh, I remember I'd always see those prizes. It'd be like, ooh, look, a bicycle or a guitar. I mean, it'd, it'd be like, ooh, that looks so cool. And then as you get older and you start thinking like, like number one, like you said, I can just buy it myself. You could, <laughs> I mean, Amazon or whatever. Or you could, yeah. um, and then you start thinking like, oh, wow, that'd be really cool to have that giant Yogi Bear, you know, five foot. And then you start thinking, do I have room for that? Because... You start running yeah. out of room for stuff, stuff that you really like, and then there's stuff like that, and then, and then you start maybe you got to move, and that's some of the first stuff to go. You're like, eh. <laughs> you know, do I need? Well, I remember yeah. what I really wanted from prize cakes was when I was a kid. Uh, Chuck E. Cheese was a real big thing. Were you a Chuck E. Cheese person? I wasn't a Chuck E. Cheese person, but I've been, when my son was little, we, we'd go a couple of times. But I could, I know that it, it has a special place in people's heart. A lot of people love yeah, there Chuck was E. Like Cheese. Yeah. Them and Showbiz Pizza, and they both eventually kind of merged together. Well, Showbiz Pizza was the one that was like closest to us for a while. And they had that automated band. Um, the Rock of Fire Explosion was the name of the <laughs> yeah, band. But yeah, yeah. And it had like a a, <laughs> a bear lead singer and a, you know a polar bear surfer and uh, there was a gorilla that played the keyboard and stuff like <laughs> Dude, that. That sounds cool. I want to go see that. The, people loved it so much that when they went out of business, they bought up all the animatronics and put them like in their basement. There's whole documentaries on it. And they program them to play like modern music and stuff like that, and it's pretty crazy. It's really cool. I'm gonna look that up. What's it called? But, Show, um, Showtime Pizza. Yeah, you look up Showtime uh, animatronics. And um, when I went, they to had, the, oh, oh go they ahead. had little stuffed animals of each of them, but they were each like ten thousand tickets. Wow. And I was like, I want the whole band, and that will take me the rest of my life. <laughs> you know, to, you're like, to earn that many tickets, you know. You're I like, earned enough for the gorilla. He was my favorite. <laughs> yeah, because he was wearing a, like a gold tuxedo, and I was like, he was just cool. I was like, that gorilla's fucking cool. And so I earned enough to get him, and then I never ended up getting the rest of them because it was just way too much money. I, so I think that Chuck E. Cheese didn't didn't they have a band or he was a DJ or something like I think that every Chuck hour, E. Cheese was like he had like a puppet show. I remember there was I, something like that with some music and it's like hey boys and girls or, or something. Yeah, he would come out and do like a little uh, vaudeville act, and once they merged, he would kind of introduce uh, the the um, band. He was kind of the MC, and he would introduce the band. And then uh, he also had, though, a lion that was dressed like Elvis that would oh, perform cool. in a room every couple hours. And uh, you had to know when to come into that room, and he would perform one song and then go away. <laughs> that was... Uh... So, yeah. For a kid, it was uh, amazing. So I'm, I'm, you know? I'm looking up Chuck E. Cheese right now. I did not know this. It says Chuck E. Cheese is an American family entertainment center and restaurant chain founded in 1977 by Atari co-founder Nolan Bushnell. Wow, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, I wow. didn't know that either. But it's it was they were loaded with video games, both of them, Showbiz and Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, that kind of makes sense, huh? And then why they would do that. Oh, yeah, merging and... 
The, yeah, that's that's interesting. I, I mean, it was, was yeah. for a kid. It was the best. It was it was like going to Vegas. Oh, yeah. it, you know, yeah. You, I, the, had, you're a huge video game guy, like especially like you've kept up with it. My m- most of my yeah. video game playing uh, pretty much started and stopped at the the, the end of the seventies till about nineteen eighty four. Although I still would, you know. I guess Tekken. I would do Tekken in the uh, when I got a little older, but even that was probably a throwback game, right? Tekken, the yeah. karate game. But I like Tekken, and but as a kid, I remember, or as you know, like junior high school kid. I mean, that's when we were playing like Pac Man and you know Donkey Kong and Space what Invaders. What was the and first video game you remember playing? The first video game I remember playing was Pong. Yeah, Pong, and that was at my. Uh, we're I'm, both from like the first generation video game. Yep. People. Oh know. yeah, it was uh, my aunt and uncle. They lived in Norwalk, California, and we used to live in Fresno. We'd vacation, and every now and then we'd go down and visit them. And, and to me, it was exciting because to go from Fresno to like Los Angeles, and and now I look at Norwalk, and it's kind of a joke when I make you know I shout out to Norwalk, but I'll mention that about Norwalk. And but at that time, that was my passport to fun. Like wow, Norwalk is my my uncle Joe. <laughs> He was great, man. He was he was Armenian, and he had this just a great guy, man. He was kind of like a like a greaser, you know, like the 1950s with the slick back hair, oh, and the, yeah, and the yeah, duck yeah, tail, yeah. and then he had like that. He had a handlebar mustache, but he wasn't like a hipster. He yeah, was, a lot of younger people you know? don't know that like yeah. uh, greasers were still around. Right. Like everyone thought that just died out in the 50s. Some dudes kept that lifestyle. Right. And well, if, into their 90s. You know? Exactly. And if you think about it, like, it sounds funny. Like, oh, you dress like it's 1957. Like, yeah, it was only 20 years later. Like, I, you know, like, in this, it's like 77 yeah. to 50. Well, it's and not, they weren't being ironic and they weren't no. being hipsters. They're like, you would see a guy wearing, like, a shirt that said Mel on it because his name was freaking Mel. Right. You know? Yeah. Like his work shirt. Yeah. Joe, yeah. Mel, you Frank, know. Fred, Phil, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. All that, you know, and he'd have the pompadour, the greasy. Yeah. He had the pompadour. You know? I remember he just to wear the jeans. He probably, I think he may have had a chain wallet, you know, and the, yep. you know, and I remember he would tell us stories of, he's like, he's like, yeah. He's like, yeah, me and my boys, me and my friends, we'd, me and my pals or what he would call them. We'd, we'd ride yeah. our bicycles down to Venice Beach and there'd be like the main entrance welcome to Venice Beach. And he said, you'd leave a little note on some sort of either a board or a rock wall or something like that and that's where you would you know your friends would meet up and be like oh they're down at the milkshake shack or whatever and that's how they kind of communicate because you know if you think about it it's amazing how hard it was to communicate totally people found ways you know i know like if i said hey can we meet at bob's big boy at uh five o'clock and then you're sitting there and I'm and it's 5:20 and you're like where the hell is he? and you just keep looking at the front door like is he what do you know and that's just what you had to do back then is either yeah you just waited and then like and you to leave me a message I'd have to find a certain tree in the woods <laughs> and there'd either be a note pinned to it or you'd carve a whole note into it you know, and it's like, oh, I guess we're going to Bob's Big Boy tonight, you yeah. know. I, I used to have a, I remember, like, having a friend, you know, I'd be, like, 11 years old, and he's like, yeah, I'm going to come over. So anytime I, you know, I hear a car coming down the street, I'd run out to the curb to see if it was him, and the car would go by, like, dang it, where is he? And you're just waiting and waiting, and then, you know, maybe you might get stood up, and then it turns out, yeah, my mom said no, and you're like, ah, like, or, you know, there'd be an excuse, and it's like, gosh, you know, now you're lucky, we get cell phone texts. You know, where are you? What's going on? Yeah. Yeah, my mom has tried to call three times during this podcast. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's I, awesome. I, I know what modern technology is happening. <laughs> yeah. You're like, Mom, I left a note on a rock. Yeah. It's kind of funny how she... I, I love my mom. Shout She's out great. to mom. But she texted me uh, one day where... You know how sometimes you forget a detail mm-hmm. and then you send another text and you're like, oh, by the way, it's this. Oh, and there's that, you know. Well, she did like 11 of those. And <laughs> finally, my phone was like, would you like me to mute your mom? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. boy, if you'd asked me that when I was seven. <laughs> yeah. I just thought it was funny that the phone. Is that an iPhone like, feature? Yeah, it was like, wow. have you had enough of this person? Oh my gosh, that's kind of cool. They have that. Any of these. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> wow, 
That's uh, that, that sounds like a hor- that's like a horrible thing. Had activated, you know? Oh yeah, that sounds terrible for like a relationship. You know, like imagine like you know young lovers they get into a little squabble and they're trying to reach each other and then finally they're like I've had enough of you and they just like block you and that's you know that's no good. Well, that happens all the time, <laughs> yeah, Darren. That, I know. I know. Uh, I know. <laughs> it's it's not a oh it would be horrible if it's that. And you can it's also tell which end. which side of it I would be on by my statement. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're like, that'd so, be great to do that to all these chicks. No. <laughs> look, I, I know you haven't answered any of my previous ones, uh, but maybe you would answer this one. Are we still friends? <laughs> I know. Like, you see these public meltdowns with uh, celebrities where they, you know, I saw one the other day where, and I don't even remember who it was. It wasn't Kanye. I know there's the Kanye thing, but there was another one where the guy took his girlfriend's phone and did a live stream and was you know on her account saying how she's narcissistic and she's this and she's that and yeah and it's just like dude that's just that's wow that's not good well i i had a friend we had kind of a falling out where uh you know it doesn't really matter what happened but i had invited them to my birthday and it was in october mm-hmm and they never responded and i was like that's kind of odd and i was like oh maybe they're still mad about that one thing or whatever so like about a month and a half it was no it was like three months after my birthday that was the last text that had been sent between us was like, Hey, do you want to come to my birthday? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so now the birthday is well past it's three months later. I was like, I'm going to try and bury the hatchet with this person a little bit. And so I sent, what I sent was I'm putting you down as a maybe. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, the <laughs> birthday had happened three months ago and I was like, I'm putting you down as a maybe. <laughs> and uh, they responded, ha ha. And then we, kind of became friends again after oh, that. Oh, that's you know? good. See, but yeah, if you guys had that feature where you muted each other, blocked each other. Yeah, they would never have seen that. So you never know, you know. I I try... Uh, I think it was in What About Bob, where... Uh, oh, I love that movie. Uh, he says they're just unavailable right now. You know, like, <laughs> don't write anyone off. Don't, you know. Yep. And uh, Mike Myers put it a really good way once where they asked him if he wanted to do another Shrek. And he <laughs> said, well, in in Canada, we have a saying, the door is closed, but it's not locked. Oh. And I was like, okay, that I like that, <laughs> you know. Yeah, so I like that. any of my friends out there that are, like, holding the grudge or whatever, uh, c- come on back. I don't care. Yeah. It's. Like after after the last couple of years, if you survived and you're still around and everything and want to hang out, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> you know, that's that's good, man. That's uh, you know, I'm I like that too. I like that as well. You know, except for Rudy, for Rudy, and you know who you are, Rudy, Rudy, blah Son blah blah. Bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it, you're right. I it's it's funny. You, you just I like the doors closed, but it's not locked. And I think sometimes. You know, you never know what people... I try to look at it from their perspective. Like, well, you never know what they're going through. And yeah, know, maybe, you know, they see, maybe there's something happening. And, you know, so you're right. You're right. It's a... Uh, I've, I've had falling outs too. And I'm, I'm, I'm the same way. It's like, well, if they, you know... And there is one person I, I used to... Uh, you know, if, if any of the listeners know, tell them I said, what's up? I used to do a podcast years ago with the guy and... You know, I guess he went through a lot of stuff, and one thing led to another, and we ended the podcast. And he, he and I, I think a fit of rage, perhaps he just blocked me on all social media. And it's like, oh man, I know it's kind of weird. It's that was like eleven years ago, and but it's funny I've ran into him who, a couple. Who was the guy? Uh, his name was uh, shout out to it, Dangerous Dick. He was a radio guy and a and a great storyteller, but um, it's funny I. You know, I guess, you know, I, I know this sounds pretty cliche, like everything happens for a reason, but, you know, I stopped doing the podcast, I focused on other stuff, and then I started my own, and it's definitely has, this. Uh, th- these podcasts have a way different tone, <laughs> and uh, mm-hmm. I kind of like where it goes, maybe I'm, you know, I'm like, you know, at that point in my life, uh, you know, you do these partnerships with people, and 
and you know in you sometimes do stuff you kind of don't want to do like hey let's interview porn stars or let's interview and you're just like oh right really? and i'm like yeah oh, that's not really what i want to but it's funny i've run into him a couple of times like at the comedy store and he's always really nice and cool and um but it, I've, like i said i've only run into him twice but uh it does make you wonder what happens to people that are you know you no longer hang out with but i wish them no ill will and i hope they do great it's uh right a lot of know. it's uh communication stuff and two it's like sometimes i've i've had the same thing where i've had people i worked with on podcasts kind of have a meltdown or like i had one guy who was producing a number of podcasts and he uh fired everybody and we didn't know it at the time but he had just gotten his wife pregnant mm. and had like a lot of stuff going on at home and so it became a big sing and we were like oh that's too bad you know yeah but a lot of times you also don't know if like you you work on different ventures and entertainment with different people and you may not realize it but it may the thing you're working on with a guy it may be all they've got in a way <laughs> you know like right that may be all they have to look forward to or whatever you know or they think it's all they've got or whatever you yeah. know and you know sometimes it's just that it's they're way more invested in the thing than you are yeah or like you said yeah. about like interviewing a porn star they they think you're on the exact same page about how cool that would be you know and it's like eh, not really <laughs> it's not right it's, right it's, and it, these are not hard interviews to get you know? <laughs> exactly but it, listen but and that's the thing I, i've done some growing up too i realized like you know i look back at, a, at our uh, working relationship and i was like you know what i used to you know i used to roast him a little too much and it was you know people thought it was funny but maybe he didn't think it was funny and you know i would do these right. imitations of him and you know i remember the guy was from kentucky and so sometimes i would i would give him a voice and and you know yeah. you know i mean it's easy it's just easy and yeah and i've been know, on and, both ends of that myself where, yeah you know, yeah where it's like if if you're confident enough you can just go can we kind of ease up on the impressions of me or on the right jokes about this thing or that thing but a lot of people just internalize that and they go oh they they just hate me and oh, they're yeah. doing that because they don't like me <laughs> and that you know right. and it's and weird it's like, how like it's usually yeah. that's not the case at all if someone's bothering to make fun of you yeah uh Right on a show like that, it's because they they like you and they're entertained having you around and everything. You don't really waste a lot of time on people you don't care about. Right, you right. Know. Have you ever been into a situation where people try to paint you a certain way and you're like, "Whoa, I'm that guy now." Like that's kind of like I've heard that happen. I've, I've it's funny. I've witnessed it to other groups of uh, podcasters or this or that. Like you know. Uh, you know, all of a sudden, one of them is like, "You're now, you're the old guy," and the guy's like, "Well, I'm the old guy," and I'm like, just because maybe he's like eleven years older than the rest. But it's like, damn, it's I, I saw that happen once recently, or, or you know, you get painted as the, uh, you know, uh, the guy who never made it, or you get painted as the, the, you know, the bit, and you're like, well, I'm not really the, or it's that's funny to see that happen with friendships, or you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I think the the best thing you can do is not respond to that or not play into it. You know, yeah. uh, a comic like right when uh, right when I started going to the store, a comic like threw a nickname on me mm. that I didn't care for, and so I just gave him one that was three times more embarrassing. <laughs> and I said, are we going to start giving each other code names now? Is that what we're doing? That's what I'm talking about. That kind of stuff, that boys club type of, you know, <laughs> you know, and yeah, it's, it's, it's and one it, thing if, if it's one you've heard before, like, you know, obviously when I had red hair, I was like, Hey, what's up rooster? Or they used to yeah. call me the Shermanator or Richie kind of all that good stuff. Like, I'm like, okay, that's cool. But then when you hear one that's new, you're like, whoa, that's not flattering. I'm like, dang, I can't think of an, an, an example now, but it's like, it's, it definitely throws you for a loop. Like what you said, the guy's trying to throw out nicknames. Hey, you know. Well, when it's like, usually what I find funny about that is a lot of that stuff is done when there's a whole group around. Mm. You know what I mean? It's rarely done one-on-one. -on -one. Like, 
someone will rarely would rarely call you like red if they didn't already know you as that yeah. in a one-on-one thing it's more for everyone else's benefit of see how cool i am i can call him that and get away with it <laughs> right yeah you know what i mean yeah i've had a lot of comics are real insecure and one of their first things to try and do is throw each other under the bus in oh, front yeah. of the other comics yeah, yeah 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 and you know i've been a fat oddball my entire life i'm mm. well equipped to deal with that stuff right what i find is that most comedians when you fire back aren't Ooh, i like that you know <laughs> they're like i i've been humiliated publicly since i was about five mm. very very often you know throughout my life and i've never really fit in mm. and there's a certain power to that because you don't really care you get right. to a point where oh humiliation is i'm an old friend of humiliation <laughs> that's been going on <laughs> yeah. for a long time but the people that have like worked really hard to be part of the group mm, and have kissed ass and have worn the right clothes and have said the right things and liked the right bands. Yep. When you fuck them up publicly, that's a problem. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> they don't, they really don't know what to do when that happens. Right. And then all of a sudden it's, ah, I thought we were just kidding around, but we were, <laughs> isn't it fun? Aren't we having fun doing this? <laughs> yeah. It's the same thing with bullies, basically. Yeah. It's a type of bullying, essentially. Yeah. But a bully, when you really think about it, if you're like scrawny little Darren Carter in fourth grade, right? Yeah. yeah. And some big, tough bully comes along and beats you up. Mm. That's what everyone expected to happen. You know? So nobody really cares. They're like, great, you beat that kid up. Yay. Good for you. <laughs> you know yeah. nobody cares however if you even so much as draw blood if you fought back and punched him in the nose and and he bled suddenly he's not the toughest guy in the world anymore. you he's, know yeah now all the other kids are like oh he can get hurt too if he tries to bully me i'm gonna beat the crap out of him you know <laughs> And so he's the only one who really has anything to lose in the situation. <laughs> but a lot of people don't know that, you know. I saw that recently happen on a, a, an episode of Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> they were like, they were, there was the, the, the bully. Every comes, time I yep. try and make you seem cooler. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it was a re You bring it back to Little House on the Prairie. I'll make it I all just gave you this great story where you beat up a bully. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. on Little House, they did. Oh, God yeah. damn. It was a remix. <laughs> so Jay-Z produced this episode. No, I'm just kidding. Now is it cool? <laughs> yeah. The, uh, I would love to see jay-z's little house on the prairie yeah, yeah but yeah they they stood up to the bully and then one girl kicked him in the shin and then another girl then they just started you know because he first he started pushing these girls around and then all of a sudden they just dog piled and like 12 girls just bum rushed him and wrestled him and you know that kind of thing and he was humiliated <laughs> <laughs> he was humiliated yeah yeah, so back to your original question, and uh, before we wrap up, but yeah, Pong was my original video game. I'd, we'd come down to, you know, my Aunt Judy and Uncle Joe was great, man. They had this cool old-style house in Norwalk, and in the backyard, he had a separate, um, probably a separate garage, but we called it his game room, or back then, we called it the rec room, and the rec room is where he had a, like a, ju yeah. he had a jukebox and a pool table and... Uh, you know, they had Pong, you had video game with the, you know, the cables with the controllers and there was p cool poster. It was just, it was great. It was great. It was like a whole other, it was just imagine a 1970s game room, man. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah that was a very big seven, 70s and 80s <laughs> suburban thing, you know. Uh, yeah, you... That, He'd work on, yeah. on yeah, he'd work on his Harley and the different, you know, mechanical things in the in his real garage and in that back garage is where the that's where the fun was, man. It was so cool. Yeah. There was always like a little bar. Yep. Everyone had like yeah. a little bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, they, they even showed one in uh, Edward Scissorhands. Uh, the, their family had a rec room. But yeah, the, like there was like a mini trampoline in a lot of them. That was a big thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, any family that had a second TV seemed like rich as hell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They would, oh, I, I can watch all the sports games down here on this TV. And it's like, oh, my God. you know, Dude, I remember. Oh, my God. Now that you say that, we used to have, like, the main TV in the main family room. But then in my parents' bedroom, they had, like, a. it might have been even, like, a black and white TV. Oh, my God. Yeah. Black and white TV probably propped up on top of, like, a sewing machine. And I remember, like, my parents would be in the main room watching, like, Lawrence Welk or some boring stuff that the whole family had to watch. And I'd be sneaking off to their room turning on the tv trying to watch what i wanted to watch and then you'd you'd hear them get up because she had that chair with the feet kick out you'd hear the handle being pulled and the the feet being pushed down and you boom, you <laughs> turn the tv off and then run into the bathroom i was just using the bathroom <laughs> it's so funny you know the stuff we do back then you know yeah we would almost always like end up like if you'd have friends for a sleepover you'd almost always end up wrestling and someone would get hurt. <laughs> oh, know? yeah. Yeah, and the kid would cry. Like, don't don't cry so loud. Don't cry so loud. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because you know once the kid, mom, then it's over with. It's like, no. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They would. Uh, the next thing you know, their parents are like having to pick them up at one in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I got hurt bad once on Halloween. Uh, sorry. Some... Sorry, my son pooped his pants. We got to go. <laughs> I remember we were all rushing to this one door on Halloween, and my uh, older sister somehow, I don't know if she did it on purpose or not. Yeah, she did. What the hell? I'm trying to protect her. But yeah, she pushed me, and my head hit the corner <laughs> of the house, and boom, I had to get stitches in the hospital. Ooh. I know. That was ah. a, Yeah, that was a... That's rough. Yeah, that was a rough one. I remember we were... Kids are stupid, dangerous. We were throwing rocks around. Oh, God. Uh, like, up in yep. the air. We, we found out that, like, if you throw a certain kind of rock up in the air, when it lands, it'll bust into a bunch of pieces. And we <laughs> thought that was the greatest <laughs> thing ever, you know. And so we're throwing these up in the air, and one kid threw a rock up while another kid was looking for rocks on uh -oh. the ground. Oh, yeah. Million, you know, million to one shot. Hit him right in the middle of his back. The kid could have died. But, you know, he... He was like, just, he fell over and we were all like, oh no. And then he started screaming at the top of his lungs. And we we're like, oh, oh no. we got to get him home. <laughs> and, you know, and they were like, what happened? We were, we were throwing rocks and stuff, but oh, my we were trying to get him, you know. You I, know. I remember my buddy, uh, um, I won't say his whole name, but we'll just call him Mr. Sabatini. <laughs> mm -hmm. I remember he, somehow he threw a rock and hit me and I got hit in the head. And it's uh yeah. yeah, it was like ding. I remember that that hurt. And uh, yeah, you and get. I just saw on it, Facebook the other day because I'm still friends with them on there, and it's like, congratulations for 30 years working at the hospital. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, well, oh, that may have been what got him into it. Yeah, yeah I know, right? Yeah, it's kind of funny. We used to have dirt clawed fights. No one gets hurt because it's dirt; yes. it just explodes. And how fun was that? It was fun and painful as hell if they yeah. were like had really solidified. Oh yeah, and, and those were the good ones. The one I had an ice ball thrown in my face when I was a kid. Wow, now and that's woo. That hurt. You know, like you you don't realize, but like at that time in your life, you're getting more like death defying injuries than the you will the rest of your life. I haven't been hit with a dirt clod in thirty years. What are you doing Wednesday night, 9 uh, p.m.? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been hit by a rock. Oh, I gosh. I know. my knee. I haven't, you know. <laughs> a lot of that stuff really does toughen you up, you know, the, the kids that survive it, you know. So there was a uh, news story I heard recently. Have you heard about this, the Pentagon study? It's called the Nintendo Generations. They're saying that our skeletons nowadays of the, the young people, it's very weak because they're, you know, the, what you just said, they're not doing the... You know they're not out there. You know uh, they're, that, they're, they're, they're sitting. I, I could totally see that being the case. Um, there are a lot of kids that just don't do anything anymore. I remember seeing a thing that I thought was kind of like, "Oh, this might be the future." Yeah. Where there's a mall in Cherry Creek, Colorado, where it's like an upper crust sort of mall, mm. 
but instead of a regular like jungle gym for the kids, yeah, it, it was a very artistic version of one, and it was all like giant food, and they're like cute little cartoon ants on the food that the kids can mm. play with and whatnot. But uh, you know, there's a a big hamburger to climb on and big french fries and all that stuff well there was a big potato chip mm. that was a slide basically it was like a humongous potato chip that kids could slide down <laughs> that sounds awesome <laughs> and all these kids are kind of having fun doing all that stuff but there was this one little chubby kid i wouldn't say fat but a little chubby kid who was just kind of sitting Indian style. Yeah. And he, he couldn't have been more than two. But he he was just chilling, just having a good time, watching the other kids play. But he didn't really want to. And his parents were so concerned that he was just sitting there. <laughs> and and they, they were like, well, maybe, you know, he needs like a, a push to, to get started. So his dad picks him up. And he can barely lift him, <laughs> but he takes him up to the top of the potato chip and sits him there. And he's like, any minute now, he'll get the idea, you know, to to go down the slide down. He doesn't. He just sits there and just keeps sitting there. <laughs> and so finally the mom is like, well, do something. And so the dad pushes the kid. And the kid looks back like, why would you do this? Yeah. <laughs> and, and just kind of slowly scoots halfway down the slide and, and just lays there. Oh, that's hilarious. And he just lies there like, well, that was horrible, <laughs> but at least it's over now. <laughs> and he just kind of stays halfway down the slide for a long time. I was like, yeah, there's something changing in, in the in the world where a kid doesn't even know what a slide is for or anything yeah, and but, certainly isn't enjoying it yeah, you know like, yeah he's like what's the point i'm sitting here why would i want to sit down there like, <laughs> yeah he was like i was perfectly fine where i was and then you pushed me down a hill you know? <laughs> that's amazing mike man what can i tell you it's always great to have you on and uh, i always end these podcasts feeling better than when i started and that's that's a good sign Oops. That's a real I'm sorry. Good it 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 uh, it cut out right when you said I always end these on that, and oh. I was like, "Is he done?" Oh. <laughs> no, I, I was I was just telling the audience how much this episode. No, I'm just kidding. It sucked. Yeah. No, no, I was saying what I was saying is I we always end these. I, I'm always ending these episodes with you feeling better than when I started, and that's a that's a true gift of what you bring out in people, man. Thank you. Oh, thanks, man. You know? I, I feel much better than when you first call me. Thank you. I know it always uh, works out like that, right? Like before the phone call, I'm like, okay, we'll talk about this, this, and this. And then we just, it just we goes. We don't really talk about any of that. Yeah. And we talk go, about whatever. Right. And, it, and, and that's great, man. It just takes you to that, that happy place, man. So I got to figure yeah, out what I'm going to. Yeah, it's a good way gonna, to start the week, I think. It really you know? is. And I got to figure out what I'm going to. If you <clears throat> have any ideas, maybe now or text it to me later what I should call this episode. I never know what to call it. Like. Uh, what did we talk about? Um, I'll, I'll get, yeah, a, a lot and westerns. Westerns. The doors closed, but not always locked. We talked about Showtime Pizza and animatronics, throwing rocks, video games, Pong, Dave and Buster's, murder mysteries, Cowboys um, and video games. <laughs> Cowboys and video games. I like that. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up, grow up to be cowboys. cowboys. <laughs> and video games. I don't, I don't remember all the lyrics. All I remember is "Let them be doctors and lawyers and such." <laughs> That's right. Who was it? Who sang that again? Willie Nelson and um, Waylon Jennings, right? Waylon Jennings. Mama, I love that. Don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. I remember uh, the, on the Country Music Awards, Willie Nelson won for that song, and Waylon Jennings wasn't there. And he he won like six awards that night, and he was like, "Well, this is another one for me and old Waylon." <laughs> then the next time he'd come up, here's another one for me and old Waylon. Then the oh. Statler brothers won some award, and they went up and they said, "This is for us and old Waylon." <laughs> Dude, that's cool that you know the Statler brothers. They're another amazing yeah. <laughs> group. They, those guys can harmonize, and they've got they were backup singers for Johnny Cash for a while. Man, those guys are Watch, good. Watching flowers on the wall. Yep. 
I, I remember hearing that song in Pulp Fiction going, wow, like that's yeah, so cool like, that, yeah. Tarantino's got a great ear, man, for for cool music. You know that story about the five, six, seven, eights? No. Where uh, it's the band that plays in Lucy Liu's uh, hideout in uh, Kill Bill. No, tell me. And they're this great girl band. And he heard them when he was in a laundry getting his stuff picked up, mm. uh, I think in Japan. And he was like, who is this band? And they were like, 56, 78. He goes, no, I know. I'll pay for my laundry. But who is the band? 56, 78. <laughs> and he was like, so I give them the money. And they're like, no, you only owe $30. The band is a 56, 78. And he's <laughs> like, what the? The band is called the Five Six Seven Eights, wow. but that was as close as they could get to what he was saying. <laughs> and he was like, "Can I have this tape? Because I need to track them down." And he literally stole the tape from their cassette player, wow. so that he could go and find out about the band. And then when they got called, they thought it was a joke. They were like, "The American uh, movie director uh, wants you to be in his movie." Uh, can you get there tomorrow by noon? And they were like, oh, sure. You know, and so, like, <laughs> then they got there and they were like, it was a real movie set. And so, and their song went to like number one all over the world after that. And it's, I'll look it up. It's called Five, Six, Seven, Eight. The, the band is called the Five, Six, Seven, Eights. Wow. And it's, it's from Kill Bill. Yeah. If, if you watch Kill Bill, uh, the Crazy 88s, uh, hideout has a live band playing. Uh, I'll, I'll find it. It was, uh, and it's them. you they're yeah. actually in the movie. It's that, not just the that, voices. That's part of, uh, knowing what search words to use when looking for something will help you tremendously. You seem to be pretty good about it. Cause even on the podcast, I've been, I've been, you're like, no, no, put this term in because there was a song I was trying to find yesterday and I had a really hard time finding it. It took me about, 10 minutes which isn't that long but it was and, and and it was and basically i figured out if i put the search terms um dramatic scene usually castles usually some type, type of fighting maybe um and then the lyrics all i couldn't even think what the lyrics were but it was like it, it was like he he ha ha he he ha and it turns out it was uh excalibur something it was like a one of the top 10 scariest type of dramatic you know uh oh yeah the, yeah. the soundtrack for excalibur is amazing. i think that's what it, i still can't i i could find it again because i've saved it but it's like that that i found but then last night i was thinking of this song and i'm like how can i and i heard the song and but the thing is it had been remixed for like a hip-hop album Oh, so anytime okay. I did Shazam on it, they just kept taking me to the hip hop version, and I'm like, "What is it?" And it was instrumental, it was horns, and I knew it was used pop. It was very popular in the late '70s, early '80s. Like a, like a, I always, I could remember people like roller skating to it. It was kind of funky, it was jazzy. There was some horns, and I couldn't find it. So, but I finally figured it out, and it, the song is "Rise" by Herp Albert. Oh, wow. Herb Albert and the song is Rise. Go look that up. You'll know what I'm talking about because there's no lyrics in it. So I'm like, how am I going to find it? And I figured it out and man, it felt good. But it took me 35 minutes. I mean, I actually like, <laughs> had, yeah. I sent it to different DJs that I knew, like, hey, what's, the, where, where, you know, where'd this song sample come from? And of course, it's one in the morning. Nobody got back to me, but. Can you hum a few bars of it? Uh, Yeah, I can. I'll just, oh, shit. Uh, Oops, I forgot we were on the phone. <laughs> I was gonna take out my phone and like find it, but it's I, I can't even really hum it, but it's like do 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 It's on my Instagram stories right now. I used it for some of the it, whatever, but that's it. Herb Albert. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. By the way, I got these lyrics yeah. to the. Uh, did you know that song? Did you know that Herb Albert Rise? I, I, they played that all the time in the seventies and eighties. I know, and I actually and, I sent it to a dude that was like fifty eight, and he's like, "I have no clue." I'm like, "Dude, where the hell were you?" you I thought he would know totally, but he didn't know. It takes me back because they played that in every suburban house. Yep. At everything, yeah, and there were no lyrics to it. 
but it was just kind of like theme music of the late seventies, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I could see that. Like when I, when I hear it, I think of like Folgers crystals commercials. <laughs> right. Right. You remember that in Sanka? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> oh, here's fill it to the rim with brim. Oh yeah. Fill it to the, yeah, the best part of waking up. Folgers, Folgers in your in cup. cup. Yeah. <laughs> Calgon, take me away. It's uh, a, it's, and, this was the music our moms listened to while they were doing chores. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Here's one. Um, uh, and then before we go, look at this. I, I looked up verse two of that Willie Nelson, Waylon Jennings song. Cowboys like smoky old pool rooms and clear mountain mornings. <laughs> Little warm puppies and children and girls of the night. Yes. So they like uh, children and puppies and prostitutes. Yeah. Uh, don't don't forget the prostitutes. That, yeah. They, they may like smoky <laughs> pool rooms, but they also like clear mountain mornings for the, when they have those hangovers. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. If a cowboy has to choose between puppies and children <laughs> or a good prostitute. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think your money's pretty safe <laughs> betting on the prostitute. Exactly. Them that don't know him won't like him. And them that do sometimes won't know how to take him. Yeah. Yeah. He this is true for comedians as well. Yeah, exactly. He ain't <laughs> wrong. He's just different, but his pride won't let him do the things that make him think he's right. That's pretty good. Yeah. They'll never stay home and they're always alone, even with someone they love. Wow. Damn. Yeah. Damn, the guy was like a, like a, they made it sound like he was a moody, like a, ornery yeah ornery like kind of, yeah like a cowboy exactly. you know yeah. like he picture a cowboy and that's him <laughs> yeah. yeah Clint really? Eastwood Harrison Ford I know. you know uh, oh so you know now now that you've watched The Magnificent Seven you should watch The Seven Samurai <clears throat> okay that's the that's what the movie was based on is that is that did you find that to be pretty entertaining it is. It's it's entertaining. Now there's subtitles. A lot of people that turns them right off, but you don't even notice it after a while. Like it's interesting you, you say that. I've been watching a lot of videos on Instagram and TikTok, and they have that captions option. And it actually, you know, I think it's it, so. I guess my eyes are getting used to reading words on the screen more than they were like two yeah, years. Yeah, I ago. used to think it was really distracting and it would take me out of a movie, but now it's like I don't even notice. It's just. I'll have been like Godfather 2, that great performance by Robert De Niro as the young Vito Corleone. I'd been watching that movie for about an hour when it dawned on me. I was like, oh, he's been speaking Italian this whole time. Mm. I was like, he's doing such a good job. And the movie is so engaging that I'm not even noticing that I'm reading <laughs> subtitles. Isn't that funny when something like that happens? I remember when I was a kid, really enjoying the movie Grease. And uh, somewhere along the way, maybe like their fifth or sixth song, I was like, this is a musical? I didn't even know it was a musical. I was like, I love this movie. Because I, I always yeah. thought, like, when I would see the description, the TV guy. When you think of musicals, you think of like Seven Brides for Seven Brothers and yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Know, the Hills are Alive. I'm like, I don't want to watch that. you know. But Grease was like, whoa. And it just kind of... You know, it opens up with that cartoon, and then the next thing you know, they're, man, that was a great movie. Oh, you know what? I even, I figured out when I realized that I was watching subtitles in The Godfather. It's when he says his real name to that guy that, when he gets revenge, finally. Yeah. And the guy's like, what's your name? And he goes, Andalini, and then he stabs him. And I was like, wait, I didn't have to read that. Because they, because it <laughs> trans, it's yeah, the yeah, same yeah. either way, you know. And then I was like, "Oh God, this whole movie—he's been speaking Italian, and I, and I hadn't even noticed." <laughs> you're, you're, like, you know? you're like, "Mom, the gypsy in me just came out. I just understood." Uh, you know. <laughs> right? Yeah. And like, uh, but you know, that's you know, that series of movies. Uh, you know, Marlon Brando won the Academy Award for playing that character. And then in the sequel, Robert De Niro won the Academy Award for playing the same character, but younger. Mm. That I don't think that's ever happened in the history of movies. And I heard that when they that. when they both won their awards, they thanked Waylon. Hey, oh, yeah, for us at old Waylon. That's right. If you if you're still listening, you just got a gift, folks. You just got a gift. A little callback, <laughs> for you, but. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, Mike, uh, if we're both around next week and in town and available, man, I would love to uh, do another episode with you, man, if that's cool. Yeah, yeah, just let me know. And uh, have a great week. Thanks for spending part of your day with me and uh, the listeners and uh, Mike Black. You guys can see him on Instagram and catch him at the Comedy Store. And any any anything else you want to plug? Uh, yeah, you, yeah. My Instagram is Mike Black is back, uh, all one word. And uh, yeah, I do. Most of my stuff comes out of there. You know. Awesome, Mike. You're the best. And uh, we'll we'll see you later, buddy. Thank you. All right. Have a good one, Derek. You Bye-bye. got it. Bye. That was fun. Guys, thank you again for your continued support and love, and I appreciate it. And if you want to help out the show, leave a little comment in YouTube. Share those links, either the iTunes, Apple podcast link, or Spotify. Make sure you follow us on Spotify. If it's if you're hearing this or watching this on YouTube, subscribe, please, and share those links. And if you want to throw a little, uh, little cash our way, Hit me up, uh, DarrenCarter.com, PayPal. I'm also on Venmo at Darren Carter Comic on Venmo. And the cash app, dollar sign, Darren Carter Comic. I'm on Cameo. I do personal video shout outs, and people seem to be pretty happy about it. Go to Cameo, search Darren Carter. I think I have links below. You could look at the link. And uh, we'll give you like a special shout out or a pep talk or something. Somebody has a birthday or an anniversary. Those are fun to do. And I love doing it. Sometimes I'm actually, I'm able to include my son. He'll, he'll do music in the background. So that's a ton of fun. But I want you guys to have a great day. And thanks again. And uh, remember, don't hurt nobody. Don't hurt nobody. Be careful. Everybody listen to Darren Carter. We all know he's the party starter. So if you want to listen to a podcast for free, then listen to the Pocket Party.